Hello, my name is Jazz Rivera, and this is assignment 3.6, Physics Video Project for Full Sail University. My professor this month is Professor Thomas Oakson. Um, when trying to think of a physics topic that corresponds with the game design degree, uh, I could have spoke about the different characteristics in physics that go into a game world, but I felt I wouldn't have the backing uh, or, or experience to really give a good testament. Um, I started it out thinking uh, too specifically on one, on one topic, and it just didn't make sense to me. Um, I simply couldn't do it. So for inspiration, I began to uh, research the uh, different topics in physics and while reading up on these brilliant minds behind these laws and philosophies, I thought how creative these minds have had to have been to think outside of the box and write down their theories of how things actually work. Uh, to put something as simple and ordained as an apple falling from a tree into a scientific law, one's mind had to be completely open to more than what was just in front of them, you know, to be able to see uh, the bigger picture. Um, over the past month in this class, I've learned that everything is connected in the physics world. I mean, the ocean, for example, you have boats floating, you know, buoyancy, uh, waves crashing, you know, momentum and velocity. One item, many uh, scientific characteristics. So I figured in game design, you need to have an open mind. You have to be creative and overall see the bigger picture in things, like mentioned before. You can't just look at an idea with your third eye closed, per se. You know, if that were the case, we wouldn't have such amazing games and projects that have touched so many lives over the years. Uh, taking um, you know, such a small and ordinary idea and uh, turning it into something you know, so amazing, you know, but how? And that's the million dollar question. Uh, how can we as humans really shut down our surroundings and technological distractions so that we can open up that creative vault in our minds? And um, you know, after uh, looking up different ways to assist in opening up that, that, that vault, I found sensory deprivation. Uh, depriving one from all senses, I mean that's touch, taste, sight, sound and smell. You know, with all those things stripped away, you're left with nothing more than your mind. And uh, I had to try it, so you know, I went on Groupon, I found a, a, a float uh, tank place here in, uh, in Orlando and um, you know, I, I told the, uh, the lady I was here for a project and she really, you know, she was nice enough to let me go in there for a little longer. Uh, I was over there for about a little over two hours. Um, it, it was great. And uh, it was able to let my juices flow from my mind and all with the help of physics. The sensory deprivation tank was invented by uh, physician and psychoanalyst John C. Lilly back in 1954. Now the tank is filled with 10 inches of water mixed with at least 800 pounds of magnesium sulfate, also known as Epsom salt. Uh, the water is roughly 93 degrees Fahrenheit matching the body's temperature so that once you're stable you literally feel like you're floating in, in midair. So uh, before I go further let me explain how that works. You know, buoyancy is the force pushing on a submerged object from greater pressure to lower pressure. You know, Things that float are lighter than the buoyant force making the object go up. Now when you look at only 10 inches of water and a man of my size you would think that I would sink and that's that. But the salt bonds with the water um, in a molecular level making the salt suspend. You know, being largely made of water, an average person has a density of 0.97 grams per cubic centimeter. With salt water having a density of 1.024 grams per cubic centimeter, you can see how easy it is to, to float, especially with the ratio of salt and water so extreme while inside of the float tank. Uh, there was literally no effort uh, to float while I was in there. Um, when I first stepped in the tank, I can remember putting my foot in and it was just, I, I mean, you know, even going in and trying to sit down, it was, it was, it was hard. I had to put a little bit more effort um, just to really get my tush on that ground. Um, you know, think of it like this. You know how uh, when you submerge a ball into water, you push it down, you let go, it, it, it shoots up, it shoots out. Um, that's what it felt like. It was, uh, you know, me being a pretty big guy, you know, to feel that sense of weightlessness was uh, very new to me. Um, now, John C. Lilly, he used the tank as a great way to focus solely on the mind during scientific research, uh, being that there was no outside distractions or hindrances. Um, it was reasoned that if all stimuli were cut off to the brain, then the brain would go to sleep. So to test this theory, Lilly created the tank, and in the late 1970s, uh, Peter Sudfeld and Roderick Borey from the University of British Columbia started looking up uh, ways to utilize the tank for a number of therapeutic benefits. They dubbed it REST. Um, an acronym meaning Restricted Environmental Stimulation Therapy. Great ways to promote better thinking, uh, calmness, and the reduction of stress. Um, you see, the brain 
What I've learned is that it creates patterns of electrical en uh, energy, and when it reaches its different states, such as sleep, uh, at rest, and alert, the brainwaves' electrical patterns, they change. At beta stage, the brain is focused on everyday things, you know, just regular stuff, you know, like I'm doing right now. I'm probably at uh, beta stage. Uh, it's a frequency ranging anywhere between 13 and 30 hertz. Um, alpha, the brain is at 8 to 12 hertz frequency, mostly when your, uh, the eyes are closed at a relaxed state. Uh, theta, which is the money maker here, is pushing out a frequency of about 4 to 7 hertz. This is caused during the point where you are shutting, um, I'm sorry, shifting from consciousness to sleep and vice versa. It fosters uh, dreamlike visuals and uh, vivid images. And after doing the research for this video is when I realized that is exactly what had happened to me. I mean, in total darkness, my eyes open or close, it didn't matter. Um, after a while, I began to lose all sense of time. Five minutes felt like an hour. I, didn't, I really didn't know how long I was in there for. Um, but I, I try to really, you know, let myself go. My mind started flowing with questions. I was, listening, you know, I was thinking about songs in my head. And um, after a while, I just really try to focus on focusing on nothing, if that makes any sense. Um, despite how weird that sounds, I mean, after a while, I noticed I began to grumble and grunt. Um, I was actually falling asleep. And I started dreaming almost instantly. I couldn't remember the last time how quick it was for me to sleep and dream like that. Um, waking up here and there, it was an outer body experience. Due to the sheer fact that it was pitch black, I literally couldn't tell if I was awake or asleep. Um, I had to few, you know, move my limbs around a little bit uh, just to make sure I was actually awake. Um, after a while, uh, waking up, you know, I, I sat up a little bit. I turned on the light in there uh, just so I could shift around a little bit, which they don't really recommend. They say to keep down there, but I mean, I had to feel like I was back in reality. Um, but after a while, I go back into the floating position. The, the light turns on automatically, and a soft melodic tune comes on to tell me my session's over. And upon leaving the pod, my body felt weightless for a little. It, it felt enlightened. Um, hopping into the shower uh, to rinse off, the cool water just felt amazing, and uh, my mind just felt at ease. You know, I felt I felt like I uh, awoke from a 10-hour nap. You know, my anxiety was down a little. Um, I felt good. I felt like. Uh, Doing this a couple times a year is a great way to reset your mind and focus on nothing but yourself for a few hours. Um, I feel like this is pertinent to those in the gaming industry, honestly. Um, I feel like your mind can, you know, it can't really focus on what's at hand if it's a sensory overload 24-7. So the sensory deprivation tank and the physics and the science behind it is, is a great tool for any designer or anyone who wants to get those creative juices flowing. Um, I implore you to go ahead and try it. Um, you won't regret it. Um, I'm excited to see once I am in the industry, and I, you know, I do the, the float tank every, you know, every now and then. I feel like it will help me out. Um, you know, so I can just focus on on all that's at hand. Um, but thank you. Um, I really hope you got something out of this video, and I'll be seeing you soon. Thank you.